Good afternoon, Acro family. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our speaker for today. She's none other than Dr. Mary Grace Ladion de Guzman. Dr. Mary Grace has earned her PhD degree in education with emphasis in curriculum and instruction from the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies. She is a licensed science teacher and she has been teaching for 15 years in the K-12. She is also a contributor of the Health and Home magazine in the Learner's Lab section. Her academic interests include STEM education, instructional strategies, and qualitative research. Um, today, she will be presenting a topic entitled Capturing the Exemplary Instructional Practices of STEM Teachers in the Philippine STEM High Schools, an Appreciative Inquiry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm now giving the time to Dr. Mary Grace de Guzman. Thank you, Dr. Jasmine. It's my honor and I take it as a privilege to be here in Accra to share with you the result of my study entitled Capturing the Exemplary Instructional Practices of STEM Teachers in the Philippines STEM High Schools. May I ask, sir, yeah, let me... Uh, share my screen for this presentation. All right, so good afternoon everyone. I am so happy to share with you my study and this afternoon I will let you go through the, the process of the appreciative inquiry as well as the, the, the best practices or the exemplary instructional practices of the Philippine STEM high schools. Let me start with the background of the study. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics or STEM education is the nation's future. Among its goals are are to strengthen the scientific, mathematical, and technological literacy of the students, to enhance their 21st century skills, and to provide the workforce for the STEM pipeline. That's why it was mentioned that the STEM education holds a dominant position in the modern world because it has something to do with the economic advancement of the country, the health and the security of the country, as well as the better life conditions of the people. That's why it was mentioned in 2018 that the next job of the century will be in STEM education, much more in computing and so on and so forth with other parts or fields in STEM. With this, the STEM education becomes a worldwide government effort and became an international policy as a way of establishing an economic title in the worldwide community. With this, as a response to this trend, the Philippine government under the Department of Education um, implemented the K-12 education under the Republic Act number 10533, which is enhanced basic education putting STEM education in its senior high school. Um, for the statement of the problem, in the Philippines, high school classrooms offer fragmented STEM instruction, and we know that very well as STEM teachers. And little has been known on how engineering and technology are highlighted since teachers do not have the training in teaching these subjects. Also, there is um, no picture of the instructional practices in an outcomes-based and student-centered manner. To figure out the research gap of this study, I utilized the framework of MILES to identify research gap. And I came up with four research gaps, namely knowledge, practical knowledge, population, and methodological. And for this specific um, study, I, I dig into knowledge, population, and methodological gap. 
this study or this appreciative increase study aimed to capture the exemplary instructional practices of STEM teachers in the Philippine STEM high schools. Their envision innovation to create an ideal STEM instruction, the design of the envisioned STEM instruction, and the development of a model to implement and sustain the ideal STEM instruction. And these are the four research questions based on the four D cycle of the appreciative inquiry. The first one is, what are the exemplary instructional practices of STEM teachers in the Philippine STEM high schools? The second is, what innovations can be envisioned in the instructional practices of STEM teachers to create an ideal STEM teaching at the Philippine STEM high schools. The third one is, what is the design of the ideal instructional practices for STEM at the Philippine STEM high schools? And the last one is, how can the ideal instructional practices for STEM at the Philippine STEM high schools be implemented? This study is significant because it could help policymakers, curriculum planners, administrators, teachers, higher education institutions, and future researchers to come up with plan on how to improve STEM instructional practices. For the literature review, I utilized Joyner and colleagues um, the literature review process that include, includes broad scan, focus review, and comprehensive critic. For the broad scan, I, I identified the research gap using Miles framework to establish the research problem. And then I narrowed down the broad topic to a specific one using focus review. And then finally, I focused on the core phenomenon of this study, which is the, uh, which is the instructional practices of STEM teachers. Also, this study is anchored from the Bible. Uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it mentioned about we need to do our best because everything we do under the sun, God will bring them into judgment. So Mrs. White in her book, Christian Education, said that the Lord would have us careful to do our best. We need to make use of our faculties and opportunities so that we will be, we will be blessed and edified. Now for the STEM education, to give you a background on STEM education, it's history and philosophy. The United States National Science Foundation, what we call NSF, initiated the STEM education. And it was initiated in the late 1990s. So you will see that it's not really had a long history. And initially it was founded as Science, Mathematics, Engineering and Technology or SMET. And this is to advance the critical and analytical thinking skills of the students and revolutionize the lab labor force in industries and business. The agenda behind the establishment of STEM education, of course, it's about political as well as educational positions. This is the emblem of STEM education in the United States. Why is it so? because they wanted to maintain global dominance in economic innovation while maintaining sufficient skillful supplies of the workforce for the business industries. STEM education is a socially constructed ideology because it answers to the arising societal problems that influence the economic, the political, the historical, as well as the educational part of the country. Hence, STEM education is um, a political and educational agenda. And the rise of STEM education mainly it started as, as isolated STEM. And later on, it was interpreted as, you know, science and mathematics are so highlighted in the curriculum, whereas the technology and engineering are just uh, utilized as strategies in teaching science and mathematics. And then um, currently, Start, starting like 2013, it became integrated STEM education. Literature, the literature mentioned several instructional practices when it comes to STEM. This include integrated STEM learning, problem-based learning, inquiry-based learning, design-based learning, cooperative learning, and universal design for learning. And the most and widely researched approach to STEM instruction is the PBL or the problem-based learning. This study is also anchored 
from four different theoretical um, theories, rather. These are the experiential learning, concrete manipulatives, multiple representations, and social constructivism. For the methodology, this is the research onion of the study. Um, since this is a qualitative research study, it utilizes uh, the research philosophy, which is interpretive reason. And it is inductive in approach. And the research strategy utilized is appreciative inquiry. This is cross-sectional in nature. Appreciative inquiry, which is the research design of the study, um, is, has four D cycles. First one is discovery. The second one is dream, design, and destiny. When it comes to discovery, the approach of this research design is to look at the best practices, the strength of the organization. The second one is what are the dreams of the people in the organization? The third one is to for the people in the organization to co-create and co-construct the design of that dream. And for the last D of the, the last phase of the 4D cycle is how these initiatives, the design initiatives to implement the change of the organization be done and sustained. So this is the research design appreciative inquiry. For the research context, the Philippine STEM High School was first established in 1964, and there are 16 Philippine STEM high schools throughout the Philippine archipelago with one campus in every region. These campuses adhere to a centralized system of governance and management. Hence, whatever the system mandated, based on the quality management system manual, everything is implemented in all 16 campuses. And in this study, I utilized uh, three campuses for the study that were um, established in 1964, 1988, and 2003. So these um, campuses, they have extensive laboratory facilities. Um, they utilize curriculum. I mean, the whole, of course, the whole system of these campuses, they utilize similar governance and system. So Austra they utilize Australian curriculum and you know, their curriculum is also based from the International Baccalaureate Program, as well as specialized cur curriculum loaded with sciences and mathematics. And these schools are the pioneering STEM schools in the country. For the sampling procedure and participants, um, I had three campuses as the, particip uh, the participating schools. I utilized maximum variation sampling and I was able to set the criteria in recruiting my participants. And these are the criteria here for the teachers, for the academic coordinators, and for the school directors. I was able to recruit 10 STEM teachers, senior high school teachers, um, four academic coordinators, and three school directors. And these are the data collection methods that I utilized. Appreciative interviews, focus group discussions, document analysis, literature review, researcher as instrument, and demographic profile. You will wonder why there is no observation because during uh, this study took place during the pandemic, and you know, we are restricted to travel and to, you know, gathering. So they're on, only online learning. So this is my triangulation table. You will see the data sources and the research question. So before I proceed with the data collection, I tested my, uh, my interview guide to an administrator, academic coordinator, and two teachers. And I found out that um, there, there is a right way to ask question and I need to, to use prompts and probing techniques to make follow-ups with the question to clarify the information that I want to have, as well as to simplify the terms used in the 4D cycle appreciative inquiry. And for the data collection procedure, I use this journey to have my data collection, starting with comprehensive literature review until I leave the place with a thank you note. 
For the data analysis framework, I utilize Miriam's framework that includes reducing data, interpreting, and consolidating. For the trustworthiness of the study, I utilize Lincoln and Yuba's framework that includes credibility, um, dependability, confirmability, and transferability. And you will see the different strategies that I utilized to practice credibility, dependability, confirmability, and transferability. For ethical consideration, I use Friedman and Valis um, framework, including informed consent, confidentiality, consequences, and the role of the researcher. And for the research questions, here are the findings of the study. For the first research question, what are the exemplary instructional practices of STEM teachers in the Philippine STEM high schools? And, and from the data, there were five themes emerged pertaining to, to answer research question one. These are student engagement and achievement, educational technology, students' well-being, stakeholder collaboration, teacher mentoring. And below that, you will see the different categories of these themes. For the first theme, student engagement and achievement, there were four categories. These, these were active learning strategies, collaborative learning, reflective learning, and research-based learning. And so I'll discuss one by one on these um, categories. So, the exemplary instructional practices of STEM teachers include active learning strategies. And what are these active learning strategies that we utilize to support student engagement and achievement? The participants mentioned about hands-on approach, outcomes-based, performance-based instruction, laboratory work or field work, discovery learning, activity-based learning, inquiry learning, and project-based learning. These approaches mentioned by the participants were referred to as the three H of science education. We call this hands-on, heads-on, and hearts-on learning. And these are very familiar to us as science teachers. And hands-on engagements are project-based learning, whereas heads-on has something to do with inquiry learning, problem solving learning, whereas hearts on focuses, uh, focuses on student learning, learning interest, as well as enjoyment. For another exemplary instructional practices that, that um, came up from the data is the practice of collaborative learning. According to the participants, before the pandemic, we have group works, because we do have quarterly projects and creative outputs. However, when the pandemic came in, all these things were translated into on the online platform. So during the pandemic, students collaborate, collaborate still, but in online classroom through Google Slides, Google Docs, and use of other technological tools. And one academic coordinator mentioned that they created a Discord server so that they can constantly communicate and advise their students when it comes to their requirements in the remote learning um, instruction. According to Darling Hammond, online collaboration is compatible with the technological platform. These approaches are, are effective because it gives students wider access to online technology as well as teachers and thus it's easy to combine several media uh, several media to expedite work teachers also implement reflective learning according to the participants they were um, implementing learning log what was this learning log for the, the learning log is to give a prompt or question to answer and they share it in the Google Doc for the teachers to see. It's, a learn, it's like a learning journal wherein uh, students try to, to document their learning, their questions or things that they don't understand. So teachers um, responded with this learning log by taking time to read and so 
these teachers really read this learning log so that they will be able to recognize if students are really learning their their instruction online and it's also a way for teachers to you know to to have the time to for consultation that will give uh, students feedback about their learning another one is the teachers also practiced research-based learning um, the research the research uh the teachers mentioned about research because the curriculum is based on our in on research the participants mentioned that we are in the process of purchasing sophisticated laboratory equipment for research and they wanted this this research to be community based so as students will be able to associate their learning in the classroom with the problems and issues in the community <clears throat> aside from students um, doing research teachers are also doing action research so during their uh, annual national teachers conference they were able to share the findings of their study and with this they use this as a benchmark for other campuses to apply if the context is applicable to their situation and with that there was um you know an improvement in their instruction and the last uh no and the last yeah that was the last research based learning another theme is educational technologies and educational technologies they have uh, has two categories knowledge hub and application software so the participants mentioned that they utilized knowledge hub knowledge hub or k hub was the term was a learning management system that was exclusively created for the philippine stem high school system it is like a one-stop shop for teachers and students because the teachers could teach host requirements meet students check attendance and it's also a repository of documents going the paperless instruction so the k hub is um is everything the all the necessary materials for teaching instruction is already there so according to literature uh, the learning management system or lms is a desirable is desirable to use because it connects teachers and students in a distance learning as well as there is an inclusive practice of instruction because of the integration of technology in the instruction another practice that participants had is the use of application software they said that the software allowed them to implement an interactive activities that would include uh, laboratory simulations and other activities that will allow them to have a creative delivery of the lesson and teachers also were so excited because they were able to discover new technological tools during the pandemic and they were able to acquire new skills when it comes to educational technologies according to sign and colleague software applications concretize abstract concepts thus it makes the instruction differentiated and what is really very surprising in the result of the study we all know that during the emergency remote learning it poses difficulty in instruction right however surprisingly the students learning achievement were augmented according to two school directors they were surprised because the number of directors lister or the how we call that with the high honors they increased because they were adapted to the online learning so the increase of this i was thinking how it is how is it that it is difficult but you know there are so many um issues from parents and students it's difficult remote learning is difficult online learning is difficult but you know the learning and achievement were augmented so the answer to that the literature mentioned Swartz mentioned that <clears throat> Swartz and colleague mentioned that our students are naturally they are natural technologically savvy people and with this skills that they have the use of technological tools 
heightens their learning participation that results to better performance in class. Moreover, when you do the online learning, teachers try to post the rubrics or they set a high expectations for the students. And that is very vis visible in the LMS. So they have the rubrics and whatever criteria they set. So with this, students were able to were able to look into this clear um, guidelines on what to do with their projects and their outputs. So students were able to provide better outputs in the in the learning process. The third theme is students' well-being. Teachers practice contextual sensitivity and mental health awareness. The, the teachers mentioned that they tried to balance and understand the different situations because during the pandemic, um, not all students have very strong internet connections. Some, they lose their connections, so they tend to cut their lectures short. Um, they tone down their projects or alternative assessments per quarter and they make their submission of requirements more flexible for the students so teachers practice contextual sensitivity and according to the martino and weiser this practice is about nurturing a caring relationship another practice that they had exemplary practice that they had is mental health awareness. This means that the school sent their, their teachers for any webinars when, that, that pertains to mental health awareness, such as um, the determination. Teachers were exposed to determination theory and other mental health awareness um, webinars. They also had <clears throat> Um, stakeholder collaboration. Under stakeholder collaboration, they had stakeholder partnership and consultation. Um, the school, the system practice stakeholders partnership. Uh, the, the school director mentioned about they part uh, about partnering the community uh, with the community. Rather, the school, the schools are partnering with the community as well as the industries, research laboratories, and state universities and colleges. And so they tend to collaborate with these stakeholders to improve school instruction. This, the literature mentioned, um, Tomanek specifically mentioned that collaboration with other stakeholders create awareness among experts specifically to bridge the instruction from K to 12 to tertiary and from theory to practical learning and from the supply of pipeline for the future workforce of STEM instruction. Another one, teachers also practice consultation and feedback. They listen the students and parents feedback and they apply it, they tailor their instruction according to the feedback. Moreover, teachers also had um, a mentoring process such as professional development and instructional supervision and evaluation. Um, the professional development is more on teaching pedagogy because teacher because teachers in the Philippine STEM high schools are experts of their own fields. They are engineers, they are technologists, scientists, and mathematicians. So what they lack in their education is the teaching pedagogy that we teachers had in our training, in our educational training. So the administrators focused on pedagogy. They also send their teachers abroad, aside from the insets uh, or every start of the school year. They have also this cultural exchange that is sending their teachers abroad. There is another um, <clears throat> opportunity for teachers development, which is funded upgrading that is both in local and international schools. And so with this, this allows teachers to be self-efficient, to be more confident and satisfied with their work. Another one is the instructional supervision and instruction an evaluation rather. So the school practiced performance evaluation tools specifically, they had also this example for this is the individual performance commitment report wherein teachers try to document um, their commitment report. They have their, their uh, tasks are aligned with the goals of the school. So 
Before the pandemic, they monitor the teaching through classroom observation. However, during the pandemic, everything translated into the online and with the use of technology, there was an, an easy avenue for connection. For the second question, what innovations can be envisioned in this instructional practices? So what are the dreams of the, the participants? And the participants mentioned their dream. They dream about having blended learning, to have integrated STEM learning. Blended learning involves synchronous and asynchronous learning and flipped classroom. The blended learning is a mixture. It's a mixture of face-to-face -face and online learning. And so the teachers thought of having this flexible learning setup wherein, wherein students have time, some time to explore their lessons on their own and that anything that they don't understand, they just consult it with their teachers. And so this blended learning allows students to be, to the instruction to be more student-centered as well as students became um, explorative in learning the material that they had. Another one for blended learning, they also dream of having flipped classroom. And flipped classroom is um, a strategy wherein the teacher will provide pre-class activities that would include um, videos, audios, um, lecture clips, virtual, virtual laboratory and simulation, pre-readings, study guides and so on and so forth. So students had already a prior um, understanding of the lesson. And what specifically teachers mentioned is that during the class time, it's the time for them to do their hands-on activities because students had already the, the idea of the lesson during the offline learning. Another one, another dream that they had is the integrated STEM learning. Integrated STEM learning includes interdisciplinary instruction and real life instruction. For the integrated STEM learning, it includes, um, you know, the interdisciplinary instruction in integrated STEM learning. According to the participants, this approach will reduce and simplify the requirements and it is more on a peer instruction environment. It will blur the boundaries between the disciplines of STEM and it will be the requirements we they will have, students will have one ultimate output for the multiple subjects. That's their dream to have in the future. And you know, according to Paulo Freire, um, this will end the banking system of learning. The banking system of learning is the traditional way of learning wherein the teacher is the full authority in class and the students will listen. So the interdisciplinary learning will allow students to experience positive STEM learning. Another one is having a real life instruction. Specifically, they met, the participants mentioned that they want their students to appreciate the importance of STEM fields in their life and how to apply the knowledge that they got into the real world. And this includes the real life instruction includes all these theories that support the student-centered learning. For the third um, research question, what is the design of the ideal instructional practices? So based on their dreams, they are now constructing, co-constructing the strategic initiatives on how to make their dreams come true. And the first theme from this research question is the quality STEM education management system. And another one is the productive STEM education culture. Under the STEM education ma quality management system are curriculum review, planning and needs assessment and reflective learning. They mentioned that it's important to review the curriculum. If they will embark into a blended learning and integrated STEM learning, there should be the redesigning of curriculum and instruction. And there should be the decluttering, the congested curriculum wherein the science will, will, will integrate with, the, with technology, with engineering and mathematics. And with this, they will have an adaptive curriculum. Another one, they also mentioned that there should be planning, there should be needs assessment. And from the needs assessment, they will analyze their needs. And from the data, they will produce the proposed changes. And 
the last for the quality STEM education management system is the policy. They propose that there should be policy development pertaining to funding, workforce empowerment, and facility upgrade. Funding so that there should be money for, for allocating budget for workforce empowerment. There should be um, capability building to train teachers how to implement integrated STEM instruction. Much more, there should be also facility upgrade. They thought of having um, digital library, virtual laboratories on top of the spaces that they had already, the, the physical structure, the laboratory and the library. They also look into online repositories that anytime students and teachers can um, access. And another way to implement their dream is the productive STEM education culture that involves supportive and shared leadership, national and international linkages, professional and learning community. For the supportive and shared leadership, they thought that there should be a strong support from the administrators in order to fulfill this dream. They thought also of national and international linkages because linkages of different organizations such as um, foundations, universities, colleges, hospitals, and so on and so forth, laboratories, industries, will make, will help the institution improve its instruction. They also thought of having professional learning community. It is about building small community, gathering um, teachers together, interacting one another so that they can think of initiatives and at the same time they can brainstorm and develop collegiality and positive behavior toward STEM instruction. For the last research question is, how can the ideal instructional practices be implemented and sustained? And the participants identified um, and, um, several ways and two themes emerged from this, uh, from this research question to answer this research question. These are consistency, resilience and agility. Under consistency, they mentioned about dedication, commitment and involvement, communication, periodic program evaluation. They mentioned that they should be uh, motivated and inspired. They should grow professionally by continu continuing their education. They should be advocate and implementer. Um, they should have the dedicated efforts. For communication, they uh, the participant, one specific participant mentioned that it is making all stakeholders understand why such changes are necessary so that when they understand the change, they will readily embrace the change and there will be minimal refusal for the change. Another thing to, to sustain the implementation of the ideal instruction is the program, uh, the periodic program evaluation. They believe that monitoring the implemented change is very important. It should be continuous. It should be a constant assessment. And they mentioned specifically about accreditation. It's important to have accreditation so that we are aware if we are uh, gearing towards the change that we desire. And the literature mentioned, specifically Scriven mentioned about formative and summative evaluation. The formative evaluations are relevant because they support the periodic program evaluation and will determine its effectiveness. And the summative evaluation emphasizes if the goals are achieved, for example, it could be annually. Also, resilience and agility. They mentioned that there should be a growth mindset and a lifelong learning. Um, participants, you will see from, from the quotes that they really specify the mind setting. They said that when your mind is open to change, when your mind is set for change, the, the attitude will follow. And then of course the thinking will follow. And then all together when they shared all together with the same mindset, then their dreams, their dreams will come true. And the last one is the lifelong learning. They wanted to, to sustain the change. They wanted to learn continually because learning never stops. It's a continuous process. With these themes and categories, I was able to develop the components and variations of my model. I utilize specifically um, innovation configuration map. And these are the steps based on hall and board framework and so I was able to arrive with this 
components based on the themes. And this is how the components are derived from the themes and categories. And I was, for the first draft of the model, I was uh, I had identified the components and then I clustered the components and developed the descriptions as you will see here. And then I verified these components and configurations with the IC map expert. I utilized metrics such as ideal practice, acceptable practice and poor practice. And you will mention where did I get, how did I know it's ideal practice, acceptable or poor? It's because of the literature review process that I mentioned earlier. So for the I, innovation configuration map, let me just discuss two of this. Um, the first one is blended learning instruction, the modality of instruction, they dream of having blended learning instruction. The ideal for the ideal practice for blended learning instruction is the teacher explicitly designs meaningful online and face-to-face -face activities for students to interact. There should be extensive integration of technology for various pedagogical approaches, and there should be cooperative learning tasks. And teacher will initially direct the instruction and eventually uh, lose the instruction and transition it to student-directed learning. For the acceptable practice, if the teacher design online and face-to-face -face classes, there is an integration of technology, though minimal. There is cooperative learning, but more on individual tasks. And in teacher-directed and self-directed learning, they are limited. For the poor practice, uh, online face-to-face -face is poorly done, LMS and videos as the only technology integrated. Cooperative learning is procedural laboratory activities only, and there is no discovery learning. There is no problem-based learning. And basically, the instruction is teacher-directed. For the integrated STEM learning, you will see that the for the ideal practice, the teacher infuses two to three STEM disciplines and use engineering design and problem-based learning in a cooperative learning environment. Um, also link instruction to real world applications and assessments include student performance and design projects. And you will see um, the acceptable practice only two STEM domains and limited collaborative learning, limited assessment and mainly more on paper and pen assessment. And so the poor practice you will see. And so this is the um, innovation configuration map. I'll go through how it's, each component is done. And so as a whole, I was able to create three relevant dimensions or principles of STEM instruction from this study. I was able to discover that the integrated STEM education involves relationship. It is transdisciplinary by nature, and it is about empowerment. And being an appreciative inquiry research study, the study also ended with a provocative proposition such as, if the administrators, academic coordinators, and teachers carry out regular curriculum review with involvement of the significant STEM stakeholders to align instruction and practice them, there will be quality STEM education implementation, and so on and so forth. In conclusion, Student engagement and achievement are made possible through the employment of active learning strategies, reflective learning, collaborative learning, research-based learning, and utilization of edited tools. The pandemic brought new enlightenment on how to approach learning, and that is about um, us maintaining students' well-being and mental health, as well as the implementation of blended learning and integrated STEM learning. How can this be implemented is through a quality management system and productive STEM education system. Moreover, the implementation of this change and its sustainability can be done through consistency, resilience, and agility. And these are the recommendations. And this is my reflection. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you garner something from my presentation. <clears throat> So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mary Grace, for that uh, very nice uh, appreciative inquiry uh, study that you did. I believe it will be very helpful for all the listeners, especially uh, I think most of us here are educators. So um, it is uh, indeed an enlightening uh, topic and uh, ideas that we're able to learn uh, today from your presentation. 
So thank you for that. So um, uh, for the participants uh, in this uh, webinar, uh, there are many of you, but uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, click on the Q&A button and type your uh, questions there. Uh, I believe there's only one question so far, yeah? So far uh, is that uh, will the presentations and recording be available? Uh, the answer to that is yes, it will be available. Uh, the recordings at least for the presentation, uh, I, I really need to ask uh, Dr. Grace, would, we, would it be okay for the uh, participants to, to have a copy of your presentation? Yes, docs, spread the good news. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, friends, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Grace has been uh, generous enough to share it with you. Uh, you'll be able to access it through our uh, FB uh, webpage for the uh, for the you know for the video itself of this uh, presentation. Uh, we will share with you a link in our uh, FB webpage, a link to our Accra uh, YouTube uh, YouTube page. Right, so uh, here are some more questions coming up. So uh, this is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, the question uh, reads like this. Uh, Realities depict both the ideal and the challenges in life. Kindly share some of the challenges of how teachers in the integration of this program. Well, well kindly share some of the challenges, yeah? Uh, how does these challenges affect the process? Uh, okay, thank you for this question. Um, one of the challenges in implementing integrated STEM instruction is of course the knowledge of the teacher because we cannot teach what we do not have basically. So it is important for teachers to have knowledge on how to teach STEM integration curriculum. That's one challenge and the question is kindly share some of the challenges another challenge that i would like to emphasize is that our administrators do not understand specifically when when this thing when stem education is not their field so they may not have the understanding of the picture the whole image of how to implement integrated stem education with this from the administrators down to stem teachers even the staff of the school should have the training on how to implement STEM education, integrated STEM education, so that teachers are support, supported with the challenges in implementing STEM integration education. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, there's another question from uh, Mr. Giovanni. Uh, I don't know if he, you mentioned about the peer debriefing or if you did, uh, in your research, but uh, Giovanni is asking, uh, what are some of the best practices when you do a uh, debriefing? Um, peer debriefing, basically you also, uh, of course you bring the, the information they had, you had gathered from your data to your committee and they will give you the suggestion. Of course, before you can um, make those points in your study, they, it undergoes peer debriefing. Another thing that I, I see it important is also to, to have a conversation with other STEM teachers, although you cannot really divulge your study because you promised to your participants that only you, if not with your committee as well, to know about the data, so practice it, ethics. So you can just make, you know, it can, it can be a formal, informal conversation with other STEM teachers. That's another thing that I've found out when it comes to peer debriefing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so I believe you only have uh, five minutes more. So I would like to ask Dr. Pavel if we can add one more uh, question. Uh, sorry, Doc. We had, my, and I add one more. I also created a code book so that my committee can, you know, peer review my data and how I um, put them together to form those things and categories. Excellent. Uh, Dr. Pavel, do we have uh, time for another question or? I think we can entertain two or three more questions. That's fine. Yes. Okay. We have little left. Okay, so because I know you have some announcements to give. Yeah, so uh, 
uh, if we're not able to entertain all the questions, then uh, Dr. Mary, would you be so kind as to answer the questions uh, you know, via email? Uh, I'm we are going to give you all the questions that's in the chat. And uh, once you answer them, we're going to share them with the community, all right? Okay, so uh, here are some questions. Um, maybe uh, I'd like to ask the question from, uh, from Amparo Junjun, I, I, I suppose. Uh, why did you decide to use uh, appreciative inquiry? Uh, are there are there many other types of uh, you know methods in uh, qualitative research that you can use? I really like the question. Thank you for asking. I am so inspired with knowing about this appreciative inquiry because um, in reality, the the strategy um, appreciative inquiry you are trying to tap on the positive board, and that is very uh, important specifically in, in among human beings. Um, we tend to, to look into the positive. We tend to respond immediately to positive things when people ask us and we tend to respond immediately. And since I am an outsider of the Philippine STEM high school, I'm not involved in the system. Um, I feel that appreciative inquiry is very important. Um, looking into the positive core of the institution, the system, it's important to know the best practices so that we, the, the, uh, the, the user also, the uh, implementer of STEM education will learn from their best practices. And it is from the best practices, it is from our positive core that we swing going to our um, improvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so excellent. Uh, I actually ask, uh, the question from uh, Junjun first before asking the question of uh, Carlo, because I think uh, you need to answer that one first before uh, answering uh, Carlo's questions. Yeah, so here is a question for Carlo. Um, uh, good afternoon, I am Carlo Iradel from Cebu Normal University, all right? Three questions, uh, maybe you might not have time to answer all of them, but here are some of the questions that uh, he asked. So is the 4D, 4D, cycle, the only cycle there is in appreciative inquiry. Uh, and he was thinking of uh, how to ask the research questions. Uh, are the research questions the actual questions during the interview? And the third one is, uh, you know, when doing a appreciative inquiry, should you actually follow the framework that's, be, uh, that's already there? Or can you make your own framework? Yes, please. Thank you for the question. Um, uh, there is also 5D cycle of appreciative inquiry, but I utilize the 4D cycle. The 4D cycle started in the discovery of the best practices, but the 5D cycle starts with the definition. When, when for example, if STEM education is a new topic to us, then definitely the researcher has to define it. So that's why you started with, you will start with definition. So that's the, the first day. And then you go over with discovery, this uh, dream, design, and deliver. So that's, so for my study, I utilize 4D cycle. There is also 5D. Are the research questions the actual questions? No. I had um, interview questions. I call that interview guide based on the big ideas of the research question, okay? So for one research question, I have two to three interview questions. So I could get information on the, the best practices. Is the framework necessary in the appreciative inquiry? Yes, that is the framework introduced by cooperator who is the author of appreciative inquiry. You know, a bit, I, let me have a follow-up a bit. Appreciative inquiry is the counterpart of action research because action research tend to focus on the problem. And so during Cooperator's dissertation, he because he is also an outsider like me, he cannot just ask to the you know organization to the to the industry and what is your problem? You cannot just bang the door and ask what's the problem. But you know, it's more ethical to go there and say, what are your best practices? May I learn from you? So that's why cooperator uh, proposed to follow this framework, uh, discovering the best practice until the delivery of the, the ideal practice. 
Yeah, so uh, maybe just a follow-up question on that because you touched about the problems there. So uh, in, in appreciative inquiry, you don't focus on the problems, right? So it's a positive-based uh, approach to research. But, uh, you know, during your interview, your participants usually would, you know, would, would say some of the problems that they're having, right? It's just part of uh, how, how people think. They can see the good and they can see the bad. So what do you do with this data about the problems that you encounter during your appreciative inquiry study? Okay, actually, when you do appreciative inquiry, it's in the indirectly way of saying um, what needs to be improved in the organization. And so uh, with this thing that, you know, it's, it's, it's really true that during the, although it's appreciative, um, the participants really open uh, the problems here. Um, the data that you, you will, as a constructivist, you will incorporate also, for example, you have the theme and you have the category and under that category, that, that thing was also mentioned. You can just, you know, simply, at, because in research you can put the, the first, side you know the this this thing agree and also this one disagree so you need to incorporate as well those data you cannot leave it behind because the, these are also important part uh, important information in the data all right so uh dr pavel i believe it's already uh two past six so uh friends uh the questions that you have but were not answered uh by uh, Dr. Mary at this moment. Uh, she will try to answer them and uh, type her answers and we are going to send it your way. Uh, the answers will be posted in our uh, Facebook uh, page. So uh, back to you, Dr. Pavel. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you, Dr. Mary, for presenting this uh, study. Uh, we are happy to learn new things. And personally, I like this appreciative inquiry because it's uh, a good way uh, to find out uh, what needs to be improved uh, in a gracious way uh, in not only in educational area but also in other areas i see some questions asking about other areas uh, i think uh, this uh, method can be used in design can be used in different areas <clears throat> including uh, theology and this i mean uh, the church life uh, or any other things uh, or business. Uh, today we are happy to uh, recognize your study and to uh, give to you this certificate of recognition, uh, proudly given to Dr. Mary Grace uh, Ladion de Guzman for your service, valuable service as a resource speaker on the topic capturing the exemplary instruction, instructional practices of STEM teachers in the Philippines STEM High School and appreciative inquiry. Uh, during this Accra Virtual Colloquium uh, number nine on July 14, 22. Thank you so much for your contribution and for your study. Thank you so much, Dr. Bell, for the opportunity as well. Thank you, Accra, for this moment that I could share my research. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.